Our interview today is Therese Finney, who is fighting on Dana White's Contender Series Tuesday, August 20th against an opponent, TBD, at the moment. So, Therese, I wanted to start here talking about your Contender Series fight back in 2013. You go in there, undefeated opponent, Yuri Panferov. You rear naked choke him in the second. You absolutely manhandle him. Dana White passes. So I, I got to get your take on this. You know, a lot of weird stuff in that season. What, what was sort of your reaction to the whole situation? Well, you know, so, if, you know, going in, you know, the goal was obviously, like I tell everybody, I'm always going in to go and get the finish. And I know I started that first round off a little shaky. Yeah, I controlled it, but he hit me with a few good clean shots. And then going into that second round, I feel like it was almost a flawless second round, you know, like I landed strikes. I got the perfect takedown and I got the choke yeah, along with some ground and pound. Um, and Dana talks about a lot, like how he loves when people overcome adversity or, you know, going in, you know, that extra mile, they got to dig deep to get their win. And I thought, you know, it, for one, that was the first ever round I ever, ever lost in my career to be able to come back and then get the win in that type of fashion. I thought I did have the contract, but, you know, like I said, man, it, it shocked me a little bit there. But after about five minutes, I was good to go. After about five minutes, I was like, hey, man, this is what I uh, – let's let's get back to work. It allows me to continue to get better, and I feel like I feel even more prepared now, uh, getting ready – being prepared to get ready to be in the UFC than, uh, than last year. I, I love that mentality. But I, I got to ask, too, because this was, like I said, a weird season of Contender Series. Carly Judici, you know, uh, Angel Pacheco, they both lose their fights. Pacheco – by, by getting hit with a lot of stuff, if we're being completely frank, you, you watch all that. I, how do you not get upset again? Because you said you were only upset for five minutes. How do you not get upset again? You know, I was always taught young, you know, once a result happened and you, you can be no longer be in your control, put it behind you. You know, I personally only could do what was in my control. What was in my control was to go out there and get the win. I always would put the win first before any performance or anything, whatever I have to do to get the win. And I always say my performance will speak for itself. Um, I went out there and got the win, you know, granted it wasn't the most beautiful thing that ideally every fighter would like to go out there and have a picture perfect first round finish. Um, but it wasn't that for me, you know, I said I had to go overcome some adversity and I had to go through some things, but it is what it is. Our control was in my hand. Dana makes that decision, making Sean, they make that decision. Yes. It was a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, you know, to see those other guys, that, heck, one of the guys lost 30-26 on a scorecard and he still got the contract. You know, like, when you see that, it's like, uh, and then you see, like, you know, other fights where it's like, man, these guys had, a, like, one fight that was, he called it the most boring fight ever. Mm -hmm. And that guy still got the contract. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I get a finish and I saw a stat that was on Twitter that said 90% uh, of guys that get a finish on the Dana White Contender Series gets a contract. And I said, man, it's my luck to be in that 10%. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I want to ask you about the fight that you followed it up with because, it, you know, you obviously got yourself right back into this situation with an absolutely sensational finish. But before, I, I wanted to ask you about Panferov, too, because, you know, now you guys are kind of linked, you know, as everybody in your record is kind of always linked with you for the rest of your life. He went back out there and fought at CES recently and absolutely smoked a guy. Do, do you keep that kind of stuff on your radar, knowing that that's like, you know, a little bit of extra of a feather in your cap? Yeah. You know, like, I definitely, a lot of respect to Panferov. You know, we talked a little bit after, you know, and, um, you know, he, he, he was a really good guy, you know, after the show. And getting a chance to be able to see him and uh, talk with him a little bit was really cool. And, it was, I, yeah, look, congratulations to him to go back and get that win. Um, on CES, and, you know, I see he finished the guy in the second round, so he ran through him. So he did his thing, man, and, and it's good. As a fighter, as a competitor, you actually want the guys that you compete against, win, lose, or draw, to do good. That means, hey, you win against the best. Like, hey, you win against somebody that's really good. Hey, he's 7-1 and one on his record, man. Like, he was also undefeated, never lost as an amateur, never lost as a pro as well. So, obviously, somebody O had to go. And, I, you know, I definitely respect the Yuri big time. Uh, going into that fight and, and whoever I'll get ready to fight, you know, in this contingency, I, I give 100% respect. Anytime I fight somebody, you get my utmost 100% respect because I'm not taking you lightly. Um, I'm not going to go into a fight thinking, you know, somebody just, uh, I just walked through or my skill set better. I go through every fight. I watch a lot of film. I make sure, you know, I dissect and make sure that I can figure out what's the best pathway for me to victory, be to uh, accomplish that win. 
Well, you say you don't disrespect anybody because you're not going to run through them. But now we got to talk about your last fight because it only took 93 seconds. And that's <laughs> damn near what you did there is you absolutely ran through your last opponent. Now, and it's a little bit different than your other your other finishes, too. Right. Because we've seen we've seen TKOs from you. We've seen knockouts from you standing. This was different. And I, I stress to anybody who has not seen it. Get on YouTube, get on Instagram, and watch him absolutely dead this guy in 93 seconds. Tyson Jeffries, tell me about how you felt going into that fight, being your first one since the Contender Series, and obviously, tell me about the moment, man. Man, it was a special moment. You know, going into the fight, you know, I felt, you know, we've had some individual conversation management team. I had some guys speak on my behalf with Dana, with, you know, ideally what they really was looking forward to, seeing more out of me. And um, a lot of the things came up on the feet. It was stand-up. Um, and I've always told people, I've always had stand-up. Mm -hmm. But my best pathway to victory was utilizing my grappling. So it's always there for me. And um, so me as a wrestler, I'm going to always go forward with that. But I had the striking. Jeffrey showed a lot of different things. Jeffrey was very experienced. The man had over 30 fights um he's been in the game he just won his last one he's been in the game he's fought some of the best he used to train with michael bisping he used to train with luke rocco he used to train with a lot of top tier guys so he definitely had my respect a lot and you know he actually is very grapple heavy in his fights um along with his muay thai so he had a few knockouts so i was making sure i was utilizing the things that i could do after watching film to be able to go in there and be able to accomplish what i did and there's a video on my own instagram of me practicing that shot uh uh, because I wanted to utilize it and, you know, set things up. And, yeah, man, I just went in there and executed the game plan. And, uh, yes, it obviously had a viral, you know, to have a viral knockout. It's funny. I tell my teammates all the time, like, I never thought I'll be the one to have a viral KO, you know. So. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to talk to you leading into this fight about your teammates, too, because I've noticed – between uh, both you and Trevor Peak, you know, guys who train at a go-get combatives, you know, an up-and-up gym right now. But I've also seen you guys traveling a lot too, right? Getting a chance to work at other gyms and different places. Sort of what was the impetus behind traveling a little bit and seeing these other places? And how'd you kind of settle on the ones you did? Yeah, so we, you know, we've been blessed to have connections. Um, you know, one of the guys now, that, you know, he's the owner at our gym, Johnny Jones. He's been uh, helping us out and he blessed us to have some good, great connections. Um, we've got in touch with Dwayne Ludwig, who's one of the great, greatest striking coaches literally on the planet Earth. And we've been blessed to be able to have a chance as an opportunity to work with him, have an opportunity to go and work at Team Elevation, have an opportunity to go and work in Vegas, you know, with Sean Strickland and all of those boys, Chris Curtis, man. Hey, love those guys, man. They're really cool, really tight. Uh, Eric Nissen, he's a really good, great guy, really good head coach there. So we've – and also Fusion XL for me, man. Fusion with Julian Williams, all those boys, Phil Roll, Leota Machida, um, uh, Rodolfo Vieira. Uh, man, it's awesome to be able to go out there and train with those guys because those are some of the highest level of guys. You know, hey, Machida, straight up chance. You know, so to be able to go out there and to be able to have the opportunity to get the type of look, see things, learn from them, um, it's that experience, like they say, yeah, you can't pay for it, man. It's, it's one of that um, – you know, lifetime experiences and you learn from it and it's going to only, you know, continue to elevate me in my career. Absolutely. Now, obviously the next step in your career, that's what we're here talking about, right? Contender series, August 20th. Usually I end these things talking about predictions, right? I usually try to say, how are you going to beat this guy? We don't know who the guy is yet. Maybe you do and you can't tell me, but we don't know who the guy is yet technically at this point in time. So I'm going to ask you, with the fact that you've you've been sort of told that they wanted to see more out of your hands, but then again, you got the 93-second knockout. You know the best part of your game is the wrestling, is the ground and pound, is the submission skills on the mat. Do you feel more pressure going into this one to let the hands fly? Are we going to see more of it? Or is it time to show them just like, you know, what Therese is best at? Well, um, I, again, I'll, I said this last time, uh, before my first contender series fight, I said it after, and I'm going to say it again. They're not going to really consider me if I go in there and I lose. So you get your opportunity by going in there and winning. And however that is, whether that is on the feet, whether that is on um, the ground, I just need to go in there and just win. So that's going to be my only objective going in. Whatever the best pathway to victory for doing that, for that fight and that opponent, I definitely will. But, um, Overall, I, I'm excited. Pressure, man, I've been feeling pressured all my life, man. You know, that's this is nothing new to me. Uh, um, 
big time, another big time fight. It's just another opportunity to go in there and do what you do. I I personally like it. I enjoy the fact that we go in there and fight with no entry music. We just walk in and fight because I've been training all these time and all this week. It's gonna I'm about 14 weeks away. So all this time, all this, this long time for these 14 weeks up to the fight, there's gonna be a lot of training, a lot of pushing myself, a lot of sparring. And I don't wanna sit there and wait on all those announcements and long talks. Let's go in here and get handled the business, man. We know we need coming, we know what we need to come in here and do. So um, I'm excited for the opportunity once again, and I can't wait. And we can't wait either. Once again, fans, this has been Therese Finney, who fights August 20th at Dana White's Contender Series against the opponent to be determined. Therese, thanks so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Daniel.